If you've been following this and you've been following Alibaba stock over the last year to two years, you have heard about this in the news. You've heard a lot about a lot of the risks with Chinese companies. And now it's actually up something like 100% over the last three months. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at Alibaba stock. We're gonna talk about some of the risks. We're gonna talk about some of the potential reward, the potential upside. And then I'll tell you if I'm gonna be buying Alibaba stock or not for my own portfolio. All right, so first, I think it's most important to take a long-term view, a long-term perspective, and look at how this stock has performed over the long term. And the long term that we have in the US stock market as investors is looking back to September of 2014. So over that entire period from then until now, you can see that Alibaba stock, the blue chart is the S&P 500, the green chart is Alibaba stock. You can see the stock over that entire time frame is down almost 9% in the S&P 500, the SPY is up almost 91% over that time. One of the things I look for as traits of good companies I wanna be invested in is long-term outperformance because although past performance isn't indicative or proof of future returns by any means, companies, if you think about the company that you've worked at or companies you've followed or even athletes, right? Companies that execute well and perform well tend to attract better employees and then continue to, you know, have that outperformance over the long term. So if I see a company that hasn't performed over the long term, what reason would I think that it would actually turn around and start to perform better? Okay, so what's going on? Well, it's all about control for the Chinese government, really, and regulation. And then Jack Ma and the Ant Group saga. Ant Group is the other company that Jack Ma was uh, founder of. And so what happened is he ceded control of sister company Ant Group, whose planned 2020 IPO fell apart when Ma's criticism of Chinese regulators got both companies in hot water. Baba rose following word that Jack Ma, a Chinese billionaire who founded both Baba and Ant, had agreed to a deal that eliminated his effective majority control of Ant Group, a massive Chinese fintech. Okay, and this is kind of the backstory of the saga. Ma's fortunes came crashing down days before the offering after he publicly criticized communist China's banking regulators during a speech. Regulators quickly canceled the Ant IPO's Shanghai leg, reportedly on the Chinese president's personal orders. And the company quickly nixed the Hong Kong IPO as well. Ma had to meet with top Chinese regulators and even offered to give the communist government any part of his company that it wanted to take for public good. Some six months after blocking Ant's IPO, Beijing fined Baba a record $2.8 billion for alleged anti-competitive business practices. And that just started a crackdown on US listed Chinese tech companies. Many firms abandoned plans to list in New York while others already trading in America quit the US exchanges. And what you can see here using this chart, and this is why I love using fast graphs, is pretty much the peak of when all that stuff started, right? Right around November of 2020, the price of Baba was 309 at a PE of 35, which is you know above the average of the S&P 500 but really actually not you know, any higher than what it had been on average since it they listed their ADR shares on public stock exchanges because Alibaba was growing super fast. And, and it, in many ways, uh, if you have a high PE multiple, but you have high earnings growth and high revenue growth, that high multiple can be justified. We can look at stocks like MasterCard and different stocks that have had high growth for a long time and kept pretty high PE ratios as examples of that. The problem was is all of a sudden, the future of BABA became a lot a lot less known. There were so many variables and so many different things. And the Chinese government having control over the company, essentially, by being able to restrict them and fine them and essentially try to cancel Jack Ma, right? That was a major threat to the company. And in my opinion, it still is. So anyways, we have it trading down from 309 in October of 2020 to now 107 today and is trading at a price to earnings multiple of 13.66. And so that price to earnings multiple seems really cheap, right? But we have to take into account the risks of owning companies that are headquartered in China. Okay, and now we're looking at an article from Bloomberg in December of 2022. Chinese stocks in US climb as audit update eases the delisting risk. And so again, this is another risk that we have to face with these Chinese companies is that if the Chinese government s stops giving access to for other agencies to be able to audit financials and things like that, then 
essentially those firms cannot be traded on in, in ADRs of those firms cannot be traded on US stock exchanges. And this was a major problem over the last year to two years. So now it's starting to get resolved, but it could always go back the other way. Chinese stocks in the US jumped across the board on Thursday as US regulators said they have secured complete access to review audit papers of companies based in China and Hong Kong, reducing the risk of hundreds of those firms being booted from American stock exchanges. Concerns that the audit dispute could trigger a massive delisting of Chinese firms from US exchanges have weighed on the US shares for more than a year. The two countries reached a preliminary deal in August that allowed American officials to review audit documents of Chinese businesses in the US. Today's determination marks another step towards resolving the long-standing dispute. Still, there are numerous potential deficiencies. While the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission said a lot of work remains to protect investors and ensure ongoing compliance. So that's the thing, ongoing compliance, right? This could end up happening again, right? Like that's a risk. Now we can use fast graphs again, just to get an idea of some rough outcomes that could happen for Alibaba shareholders, depending on what happens with earnings and revenue growth over the next several years, right? So we're gonna go to forecast and calculators. We could put in long-term growth. So this is on average over the next five or so years, what analysts are expecting for revenue growth. And then we can see what the price would be at certain price earnings multiples. Right now, the blended price earnings ratio is 11.78. And that gives us an earnings per share yield of 8.49, which is actually a very, very attractive earnings per share yield if the risk of the company makes sense, right? If you're comfortable owning Chinese shares. And so if we look, and we think that it's going to continue trading at a PE of 11.78. Then based on the expected earnings growth through 2025, about 12.7% on average over the long term, well, then you'd be looking at a 13.5% return per year for a total return of 32%. If you want to be a longer term investor and they continue that earnings growth at the around the long term estimate, then owning shares out to 2028, trading at a price to earnings multiple, you get about a 90% total return for a 13% annualized return. Now, if you think it deserves to trade at a price to earnings multiple of 15 over the long term, which is a little bit under the average of the S&P 500, so those are you know generally America, you know the largest companies in America, then your total gain jumps to 137% for 18% annualized. Pretty much any investor in the world would be thrilled with an 18% annualized return. The question is, are you comfortable with the risks associated with owning Alibaba's stock? And for me, because I'm just uncomfortable, I don't know what's going on in China. I don't have a feel for anything going on. I've never lived there. I've never traveled there. I'm not familiar with the business world there. I am not interested in owning shares of this company simply because it does not fit my investing style or the portfolio of companies that I'm interested in right now. There are the US stock market and US tech companies have sold off a lot as well. They might not look as cheap as Alibaba's stock, but because of the comfort level I have and the familiarity I have, I feel more comfortable investing a larger amount of money in US companies even if it seems like the upside might not be as much because they're not trading as cheaply as Alibaba is. Thanks for watching, have a wonderful day. If you want me to evaluate a company, drop the name down in the comments below. As long as it's not a meme stock or a micro cap, I'm happy to review subscriber requests. And if you wanna help people find my videos and help my channel grow, you can do that for free by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for everything, have a great day.